wait for that notification. All right, great. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session, uh, Working Globally, Finding International Internships and Employment While Studying at UTA. This session is part of our Study Abroad Success Series, which is run over the fall and spring semester, where we try to highlight different aspects of uh, global learning, um, global opportunities, and ways to plan for your next international experience. Uh, my name is Ryan Thompson. I'm the Assistant Director of Study Abroad uh, here at UTA. And with me today, I have Ms. Nicole Dickens, who is the Assistant Director for Career Development Programs at the Lockheed Martin Center for Career Development, which we are contractually obligated uh, to say in its entirety. No, I kid, I kid. Glad to have you here with us today, Nikki. Um, as you can see on the overview, I will be talking about how you can find an international internship uh, while you're studying at UTA, uh, and then Nikki is going to present about uh, employment after you graduate and provide some resources and uh, maybe some advice on how to approach that after you finish uh, at UTA. Well, I'll take time for questions at the end uh, and we'll stop the recording at that time. So let's get started. When it comes to doing an internship abroad, yes, it is possible. Yes, you can do it while you're studying at UTA. But there are a few questions you should ask yourself uh, before you start. First, are you interested in a full time internship or part time? By part time, I mean while you're abroad, you're still taking some courses for academic credit and you're adding on the internship component. Whereas a full time internship is going to be just working. You're just doing this job, this internship placement uh, for the entirety of the program. You're not taking any classes uh, beyond that. So you want to think about what kind of experience you want to have. Next question. Do you require academic credit for your internship? Uh, this is something to consider as not all internships are automatically eligible for academic credit. There might be a conversation you need to have with your academic advisor and with your department about what constitutes for credit for an internship program and how does an internship fit within your degree plan? Some uh, degrees already have it built in. Others, you might need to work with your academic department to kind of create space for it in your degree plan. It could be an independent study, uh, which is then given academic credit and counts towards your degree. That's a conversation between you and your academic department. Um, one point I will say, if you can get an internship approved for academic credit, it means you are eligible to apply your financial aid to that program. So a really good motivation to get something approved for academic credit. Now, some people, they're not concerned about that. They're willing to just pay uh, to have this experience and they're not concerned about the academic credit uh, portion, but something you need to think about. Do you want this counting toward your degree or do you just want to have the experience? And then the last question, are you willing to take an unpaid internship? The vast majority of international internships will be unpaid. Uh, just the, the way it is usually governed by visa restrictions uh, and labor laws in other countries, but just go in expecting um, that you will likely be placed in an unpaid internship and make sure that you're prepared for that. So those are some really good starting questions you should ask yourself. Now, in terms of finding an internship, when you start looking, you can go two different ways. The first is through our study abroad website, which is studyabroad.uta.edu. You can see there if you go to about programs and then search programs, it'll take you to our simple search page. We don't want simple. There's nothing simple about internships. We want advanced search, so we're going to go to advanced. And then we're going to think about where we're interested in interning. Now, if you don't have a specific location, you can just leave it set to any. If you want to focus on maybe your area of study and what kind of internship you're looking for, you can do that instead. We also want to think about what term. Are we wanting to do just one semester, maybe a shorter summer internship? There are options for all different terms. Most importantly, at the bottom of the advanced search under program type, you want to make sure you select internship so that we're not looking at all of the normal study abroad program offerings as well. So once you've gone through the search, you'll get something that may look like this. So we want to do an internship in Australia. Wow, we've got several options here uh, through what we call our affiliate programs. 
Affiliates are different companies that provide study abroad programming all over the globe that we partner with. You can see in this list here, AIFS, Global Experiences, ISA, and USAC. These are all of the different affiliates that we work with. There are others as well, but these are the ones we have here. With the affiliates, um, these four here have their own internship programs, and this is where we would direct you and uh, to find the actual placement. Now, it's as with any study abroad program, it is a two part application process. There is the UTA application, and that's where we check things like, are you in good standing with the university? Uh, do you meet the academic requirements of the program? And we confirm that for the affiliate. If you're working on getting it approved for academic credit, we help take care of that as well. And then things like mandatory travel insurance and, and the processes involved in that. The affiliates, on the other hand, will have their own application process as well. And they would be the ones handling the details of the actual placement and the application process. Uh, so they would be the ones working with you, preparing you for interviews, helping you find the right fit for your internship, and then managing those details that are on the ground. Things like housing, paying for meals, those, those sorts of details for the program. So you can start through our page using the search feature I just highlighted, or you can start on their websites and start looking through their program offerings. Uh, anything on their website we can work with because they are approved partners with UTA. Um, but you do have to complete both sides of that application. Now I've provided links to their internship programs, their, their pages, uh, and I will share this PDF uh, of this PowerPoint presentation after we finish today, so you'll have access to all of their pages. Uh, AIFS actually partners with a group called Global Experiences to provide their internship programs, um, but all uh, three of these, AIFS, CIS Abroad, and ISA, have both of those options for full-time or part-time internships that I mentioned earlier. So if you want to couple an internship with some coursework, you can do that, or you can just do the full-time internship. Uh, and USAC, I believe, uh, might have those options as well. I think they're largely just um, part-time internships. But visit their page and see what they have to offer. It's important to know that when you're working through these affiliates, you are not applying to an individual company. So uh, if you want to show up and say, hey, I want to do a fashion internship at Gucci, uh, you know, they may not be able to help you with that precise of a placement. What they will be able to do and guarantee is a placement within your industry or career field of choice. Um, so they don't work with specific companies at first. They work with you on your interests, your academic focus, and your experience and skill level to find the right placement for you. So you can see here an outline of the process. Uh, this is just for one of our affiliates, the Global Experiences one I mentioned earlier. You can see there's an advising stage at the beginning. That's where you're talking to either me or working with Global Experiences. You're reviewing your options, choosing your career field. You're working through our office to get approved and accepted for the program. And then Global Experiences is working with you to get your interview placements, and they're working with you to develop your strengths. Um, this program in particular uses the Clifton Strengths Finder um, program to talk about your strengths and teach you how to present your strengths to employers, both during the interview and while you're on the job. They help manage the housing details. When you actually start your internship, they're there doing an orientation on the ground and then checking in on you throughout the uh, internship. At the conclusion of the program, they're also run, uh, providing materials to help connect your experience that you just had to your future career. Now, this is just, again, one of our affiliates. All of our affiliates are going to have pretty similar processes. Um, this is just a visual that you can see how that process works. Here are a few examples of placements that these affiliates have provided in the past. Um, different industries, different placements. Um, but again, remember you're not applying to an individual company, but to a type of industry. And then they help uh, based on your interests and your experience. A few examples of UTA students and where they've interned in the past as far as countries, as well as the variety of majors that we've had go abroad for international internships. So we can find a program that will help work for you uh, as we found for these students in the past. 
Your starting point would be set up an advising appointment uh, for uh, using our online booking. And again, I'll put that link in the chat and send it to you in a follow up email after today's session. Or you can always email us at studyabroad at uta.edu or you can go directly to those affiliate websites once I share those links. Either way, we'll get you started on the process. Um, that's the end of my section for internships while at UTA. Just a reminder, we do have one last session coming up in our study abroad success series called Around the World in 60 Minutes, where we will have four different countries highlighted by people who have worked or lived in that country, um, just sharing their experiences and what they value um, from that country. So it could be a great chance to get a virtual global tour. That being said, I'm going to turn it over to Nikki. Nikki, if you want to request control. There we go. It said my request was not accepted. So let me, well, let me see. Is it? Yeah. Are you advancing or am I advancing? <laughs> it's just being very slow. OK, well, I am happy to have the opportunity to be here with you today. My name is Nikki Dickens, and I'm the Assistant Director for Career Engagement and Professional Development at the Lockheed Martin Career Development Center, which is a lot of words. Um, so feel free to just call me Nikki. And um, just full disclosure, we do not work for Lockheed Martin. I work for the university. Um, so all of our job opportunities and all of the services that we provide are for all students, all majors, all industries. Um, we're open to meet with anybody for any career opportunity, and I don't have any insider information um, or fast track into a Lockheed Martin position. Sorry about that. But that being said, um, I do want to talk just really quickly about some of the things that we can do for you at the Career Development Center. Um, so our role at the Career Development Center is to help you discover and plan for possible career paths. We want to make sure that you understand um, or have a pretty good idea of what your options are um, and that you are going to find those options or those pathways that are going to be a good fit for you and um, what are the things that you hope to accomplish after you graduate from the university. Um, we also want to make sure that we have the opportunity to connect you with professional opportunities and employers. Um, we have an online job listings database called Handshake, um, where we post all of our part time, full time internship and um, on campus student employment positions. Um, so if you are interested in any of those types of opportunities, you can find them on Handshake. And um, you can also view employer related events in Handshake as well. So if you go to our um, events section, you can see if there is a, a virtual job fair coming up or if an employer is hosting an event. Um, so there's lots of different ways for you to connect with and network with different employers. Um, we want to make sure and this is extremely important that you are prepared to present yourself well for the opportunities that you seek. We want to make sure that you know what you need to do in order to be competitive for the opportunities that um, you might be looking for. So that can be anything from um, networking skills to you know having a good resume and cover letter to interview uh, skills, um, and just anything what to wear to an interview, um, understanding you know what to expect in different scenarios. We're here to make sure that you're confident and prepared to compete for those opportunities. Um, and then we want to help you to discover the skills that you need to be successful in your in achieving your professional goals, which um, is basically what the next slide is all about are what are those skills that employers are looking for when they are um, hiring recent college graduates? And this is a very universal um, set of skills that um, have been validated through research by the National Association of Colleges and Employers and also the um, employers that we work with at the Career Center. And the reason why I think this is so important, especially when uh, thinking or considering uh, employment um, abroad, is that um, First of all, global and intercultural fluency is one of the competencies that is is listed there. So um, even if you were just considering a temporary an internship opportunity abroad, 
um, or maybe a, a one year opportunity uh, working globally and you wanted to come back to the United States, I think that you could validate that you have the global and intercultural fluency skills um, to be attractive to an employer that is uh, maybe based here in the United States. Um, but there are also other competencies listed there that I think can be uh, gained through study abroad or working abroad. Um, so, you know, having excellent problem solving and communication skills, um, learning how to uh, manage your career and understanding where you want to go and, and being goal oriented about it. Um, so there are a lot of different uh, skills and competencies that can be gained from your uh, work abroad. However, I also think that these are skills that could help you to appear qualified for the positions that you are applying for. So I just jiggled my. OK, so um, I wanted to kind of just give you a basic overview of the Career Center and um, also the competencies that we have. Is Does anybody have any questions about any of that so far before we move on? You're welcome to just type those in the chat if you would like. Or you can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, I remember you mentioning that there was. Um, you could teach us how what to expect from these interviews and how to dress. Mm -hmm. Where would, would we go for that again? I forget that is a wonderful question. Um, yeah, so there are some um, different ways that we can help you with that. Um, one is that we do practice interviews by appointment, so you could actually make an appointment um, let us know what you want to practice, what type of interview, um, and we will do our very best to customize questions that will help you to prepare, and then we'll just practice with you. So we'll conduct it just like it was a real interview, um, and then we'll go kind of have a debrief session um, immediately afterwards so we can talk about what went well and what didn't go well. Um, we also have a virtual interview program called Interview Stream. Um, and this can come in really handy because especially if you were applying for jobs internationally, one thing that you might find happening quite a bit is that you'll get sent maybe a pre-recorded, like a link to a pre-recorded interview where you have to record yourself responding to those questions and then send that, that link back over to them. Um, so interview stream is available on our website um, and I'll give you that contact. It's on the, it's on the slide, uta.edu slash careers. Um, and you can actually go in and use interview stream and practice as much as you want through that system. Um, and then if you just wanted to chit chat about interview tips, we have you can just come and make an appointment with us for that. We also do have a pre recorded interview strategies workshop that you can watch. So there's lots of different ways that we can help you with your interview skills. We have interview resources on our website as well with handouts and other documents. So. Um, hopefully one of those or all of those can be ways that we help you with um, improving your interview skills and preparing you for upcoming interviews. Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And just FYI, as a plug, we every semester we do a professional skills academy where we actually talk about these competencies in a little bit more with a little bit more depth. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, we've already started the one for this semester. We'll, we're going to do it again in the fall. So um, if you're interested in that, keep an eye out for that and you can register. Um, it's a four week program. It's really fun. Um, and we just kind of talk about those competencies, what they mean, what they look like in the workplace. Um, and then we do some activities uh, to help build those competencies. So um, highly recommend. So kind of moving into the job search process. If it'll advance my slide. Oh, 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 whoa. I don't know what just happened. OK. So just kind of talking about the job search process in general, and one of the things that I think is really important to remember is that there's a lot of similarity between doing an, a job search for an international opportunity um, and doing a domestic job search for a job here in the United States. Um, so um, there's some pretty universal things that you're going to want to make sure that you are um, doing in order to 
um, to be prepared to conduct a job search for an international job. So first of all, um, you want to make sure that you have whatever materials uh, you're going to need for your job search, and that could include or it will most likely include some kind of a resume or CV um, and a cover letter. Um, so you want to make sure that you have a resume and a cover letter that are good to go. Um, you want to make sure that you have um, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. <clears throat> Any other documents that might be necessary for you um, in whatever would be customary for that country. Um, there's a whole other process that you're going to have to go through with visas and things like that. I'm not quite talking about that. Um, I'm really just talking about the, the job search part and making sure that you have everything that you would need to be able to apply for the positions that you find. Um, I'm also going to share with you some online job search tools and on the next slide um, that will help you to um, conduct your international job search. So one thing that you would want to do is identify what job search tools <coughs> are you going to use that will be the most effective. Excuse me in um, in your job search. You don't want to have to be on 50 different job search sites. Um, trying to kind of look through and figure out which opportunities you want to apply for, that's really overwhelming. So maybe identifying just a couple of different um, job search sites that you want to uh, focus in on um, would be helpful. It would probably be a good idea for you once you've narrowed down maybe your country that you would like to work in. Um, that you see if there are any additional job search sites hosted by that country. Um, for example, maybe there's a uh, university in that country that has a job board um, or what other job boards might you be able to access from that um, from that uh, country. Um, so you want to make sure that you identify the job search tools that you're going to use. Um, and then you can oftentimes create job search agents. So for example, on Indeed.com, and they do have a worldwide, like a global job search tool, you can uh, set up an email, you know, a profile where they will actually notify you when new jobs get posted so that you don't have to feel like you have to go in every single day and continue to look and look and look. Um, you can just kind of get notified and that can really help speed up the process a little bit. Um, you definitely want to make sure that other people know what you're doing and what you're looking for um, so that they can help in your job search as well. Um, you never know um, who's going to have a really great tip for you um, or um, advice on what would be an effective way to find a job. Um, they may even have a connection that would be beneficial to you in, in searching or um, learning about the customs of a country that you would like to, to work in because they may have been there before, they may have worked there before. Um, so that's definitely something that you want to be vocal about. Make sure that people know, post about it on your social media, um, talk to people in your classes and your professors and um, people on campus that can also be advocates for you or that can help you um, in finding the right experiences and opportunities. So Ryan shared with you some resources that are available to you through the Study Abroad program for internships abroad. Um, that's a really great place to start. Um, I bet if you were to um, ask uh, many people that have uh, that work in the international office have lived, studied or worked abroad at some point um, in their lives, and so they may be a good resource of information um, for you at least to just get started. <clears throat> And then make sure that you're attending any fairs or events um, where you can learn more or interact with people that are hiring. Um, so find out if there are virtual hiring events or networking events or job fairs going on um, where you might be able to connect with an organization that you're interested in working for. Um, and that is going to be important no matter what kind of job search or where you want to work because um, those networking opportunities and those events can be really, really effective to help them put a, a, a person to tie a person with an application um, so that you are more real to them um, than just a, just some information on a screen. So um, those are just some really general uh, tips to help you get started in your job search. Um, again, does anybody have any questions or thoughts about any of those things? OK, 
Okay. If you do have a question, you can always drop it in the chat and Nikki or I will try to answer it uh, best we can um, during another pause. And right now I'm just waiting for my slide to advance. I have a question. Sure. So whenever you're you're ready to apply for a position and you know it says bachelor degree require or such and such require, mm -hmm. um, what things do you submit to prove that you have a, a bachelor's degree or from a university? Your transcripts or do you also have to send your a copy of let's say your diploma, stuff mm -hmm. like that, or the transcript is enough? Most of the time a transcript is going to be enough, but sometimes you may be required to um, also share a copy of your diploma. So it's going to depend on the company and what they want and what they will accept as as proof. But most of the time a transcript, especially an official copy of your transcripts will um, will suffice. OK, thank you. And I'm really not sure why it's not advancing. But we're going to go with it. Um, so I'm going to put a link in the chat because this is not um, not currently advancing. Maybe it is now that I've walked away from it. I'm not well, looking at Nikki, it. If you want to if you want to give me back control for some reason, my mouse has disappeared, so I can't uh, take back control. Oh, look, I, there it's going. See, and then it goes crazy. I know, I know. <laughs> as as yeah, if you just want to stop. Um, OK, OK. Thank you. I will stop control. Yeah, I'll I'll drive from here. <laughs> Thank you. That might be easier. Um, so I'm putting the link where I got this information in the chat so that you can also access this information. Um, there are some really great resources here. One that you'll notice I didn't I deleted from the slide is the one for CEO jobs abroad because I didn't know if any of you were at the CEO level just yet. But if you would like to see what kinds of CEO opportunities are available abroad, that might be an interesting website to visit, um, which you'll find in the in the link to the article. Um, but I, I went ahead and explored these websites as well, just to kind of verify. And this is pretty recent information. You'll notice that it's for 2021. So they recommended um, careerjet.com as the best overall website for um, searching for international jobs. And Indeed Worldwide is another really cool one. I generally really like indeed.com because on indeed you can do um, some interesting keyword searches. Uh, so maybe you're not really sure exactly what you want to do, um, but you have a general idea, maybe a keyword, a buzzword or something. Um, I noticed, I think somebody mentioned finance and accounting. So maybe finance and accounting might be your keyword search that you would want to do on indeed.com worldwide. And so I like that um that that uh feature uh, a lot um one of the things that you might consider doing is um teaching english abroad um that can be a really uh, cool opportunity especially if you're just looking for maybe uh, one or two years of experience uh, overseas and then you plan to come back um i actually have a friend who's been teaching um, English in Vietnam for many years. He loves it. I don't know if he's ever going to come back. So it can be a long term career goal as well. He teaches at a school in Vietnam. Um, and so um, teach away is an option for uh, post for those types of opportunities. And I will just say that Handshake does post international job opportunities from time to time. It's not very easy to find them, but one type of position that I know we get um, that we post on and handshake um, sometimes are those teaching English in other countries types of jobs. So that could be something that you could look at as well. Um, ex Expat Network is really just a cool uh, resource for learning about what it's like to be an expat in another country um, with some tips and um, you know guides for that. It's not exactly, it's not necessarily going to be just a job search engine. Um, it's going to have a lot of advice for you on um, factors to consider. Um, USA Jobs is a really good place to go if you're interested in maybe a government job abroad. Um, you might also be interested in foreign service. Um, so Foreign Service, I was going to pop that link directly in the chat because um, they have their own website for um, 
for foreign service, obviously that's a whole thing. Um, that's a whole process that you would um, need to get started and it would take a long time, but that is also an option. Um, and then go abroad. It says international gap year jobs, but go abroad does have other, you know, kinds of job opportunities as well. It's got maybe some, um, some nonprofits and things like that that you can get involved with also. So those are just a few of the resources that um, I, you know, was exploring. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was sharing up to date information for um, connecting a job search because things have changed a lot um, because of COVID um, and, and studying and traveling abroad is kind of tricky right now. Um, so I, I wanted to, to give you as up to date as information as I could find. So those are just a few of the different um, websites that that you could look into if you're interested in conducting an international job search. Any questions again before? All right, well then, and you can go ahead and keep typing those in the chat if they come up. And then if we just want to switch on over to the next slide, um, I have just some general tips for being successful in your international job search. So one is the, the importance of networking. And I will just say that networking in any job search that you ever want to do, networking is going to be one of the most important tools in your job search tool belt. Um, knowing how to network it prop, uh, properly can really help open doors for you. Um, so one of the things that I would recommend if you're interested in living or working abroad is to network with people that have done it. Um, so if you have an idea of um, where you want to go, um, it might be helpful, but again, you have the international, the Office for International Education Study Abroad office, um, people that have lived and worked abroad um, that might be able to connect you with people that they know that may have worked in other countries um, and had different types of experiences. So that could be a really good place to start. Ryan, I hope you don't mind that I just volunteered your, your whole department. Uh well, I would say, uh, so I, I taught English as a foreign language for one year in South Korea and four years in Vietnam. And uh, yeah, it's an amazing experience. I'm happy to talk about it. It doesn't quite fall under my responsibilities for study abroad, um, but I know, you know, there's always there's always a chance to talk about it. Um, and there are several people I know, the Glo global engagement staff, um, both Colleen and Adam have worked abroad. Several within our international um, student and scholar services department have all um, lived abroad as well. So yeah, there, there's a wealth of resources there. Yeah, maybe just a starting off point for your networking, just to kind of get the networking started, you know, talking about a 10 or 15 minute long conversation, if at all possible, or even just an email that just says, hey, I'm interested in this. How should I get started? What should I do? What should, what kinds of things should I be thinking about? Um, you know, you might also, you know, look at the faculty of um, maybe the modern languages department. You know, there's people on campus um, that that you could tap into to get your networking started. Um, I can't for sure say that we're going to be able to connect you with um, global employment, I guess, people that have experienced global employment through the Career Development Center, but we do have MAV mentors that you can connect with mentors, and that could be one of the things that you look for in a mentor. Um, you could also go on to LinkedIn.com, um, LinkedIn, and go to the University of Texas at Arlington's uh, LinkedIn page and see if there are any alumni that you could connect with potentially who have worked or studied abroad. Um, you might even be able to connect with people that are from other countries. That's one of the great things about UTA is that we're so diverse that you might actually be able to connect with someone that has lived and grew up in that country that you're interested in going to. So networking, extremely powerful. It can be a really great way for you to get your foot in the door or have doors opened for you. Um, you also want to make sure that you're conducting research. And again, this is pretty standard um, important thing to do for any job search, um, but really you want to research the company that you want to, um, the country that you want to work for, or if it's an industry or um, a company specifically, then make sure that you're researching that um, and learning as much as you can about it. If it's a country, research hiring practices in that country, uh, find out if there are any job boards or um, job search sites that you could tap into from that country. Um, so uh, those kinds of things can be really beneficial 
in helping you to um, find the right kinds of opportunities in the right country. Um, so you might even want to look into what would be the best country for you um, with the best opportunities for you. You might want to know what their COVID quarantine protocols are and, and visa requirements and all of those things. Um, so doing that kind of research ahead of time can be really helpful. Um, it's important to prepare your documents and prepare for the job search that you're going to be um, the interview process and all of those things that you're going to be going through for that country. Um, so, for example, resume standards vary from country to country. In the United States, you would absolutely never want to put your photograph on your resume, but in other countries, that's considered normal. Um, I see resumes from other countries where they put their family name, um, where their family originated from, you know, things like that can be valid in other countries, but would not be considered appropriate in the United States. Um, so even something as simple as if you're applying for a job in the UK, using the UK spellings of words instead of the US spellings of words can make a difference because if they're using a, um, applicant tracking systems or artificial intelligence to scan your resume for keyword matches and you're, you wrote color without the U, then that might make your resume um, get booted out. So even just the simple things like that, um, that you would want to make sure that you're mindful of when you're preparing your documents um, for the country, for the jobs that you're applying for. Um, interview practices may vary. Um, customs may vary um, for how you signify respect to a person in a position of authority. Um, so even just researching and um, preparing for the cultural norms um, would be something that you would want to spend some time doing before you actually go into that interview. Um, and then I think it's a really good idea to, to just be flexible and keep an open mind. Um, you may not get exactly the kind of opportunity right away um, that you wanted to have. Um, so maybe it is about teaching English for a year in another country to have that experience if, you, if that's an option for you. Um, maybe it's um, doing something part time or working for a nonprofit organization instead of for the industry that you really wanted. Um, sometimes it might be a good idea to go work for uh, for a company in the United States that has a global presence that you could use to apply for a transfer in the future. So, for example, I know that um, you mentioned that you wanted to work for Lockheed Martin. Um, Jose, I believe it was you that mentioned that. Um, and Lockheed Martin is global. I have a friend who works for Lockheed Martin. Um, he has um, he started here in the United States, but then he has worked for he worked for three years in Taiwan, um, and now he's in Greece working in Athens um, for Lockheed Martin. Um, so that is an option for you as well. Is that you start here, and you might just want to start your job search by focusing on. Oh, is Johnny? I'm sorry, Jose. Uh, I apologize. Um, Johnny was, Jose, you were um, finance and accounting. And Johnny was aerospace, I think. Um, so, but the point being that you can look for companies that are global, that have headquarters or are large presence here in the United States, and then apply for a transfer um, into a, another country. If you're willing and it doesn't matter what country, then that even opens up more opportunities for you. Um, so that is definitely something that you consider as well. Uh, so with that being said, um, the next slide is just some general contact information. Um, if you're interested in making an appointment with a career consultant to kind of talk about your specific job search and any questions that you might have, including practice interviews, um, you can go to uta.joinhandshake.com um, and just log in with your net ID and password, go to the Career Center tab, and you will be able to make an appointment with a career consultant. You can also search for jobs and events like we mentioned before. Um, we also have career spot drop in hours. If you wanted to get your resume reviewed um, on the spot, you can check in virtually for career spot drop ins every Monday through Friday from one to four. And those are done through Microsoft Teams. Um, and we also do a resume and cover letter workshop every month um, on thurs a Thursday and a Friday every month. And we do other um, things as well. So you can email us, you can contact us, you can visit our website. Um, so those are just a lot of the different ways that you can connect with the Career Center. 
Um, so that's just kind of a, a, a quick overview of doing an international job search and some things you might want to think about. Um, does anybody have any questions? Actually, Nikki, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording okay. here and then sure. uh, we can go with the questions. Okay.